One of the biggest challenges that we have as content creators, as entrepreneurs, as business owners, trying to leverage the internet to promote our products, our programs and services is really figuring out how to monetize the content that we're spending all this time and energy and effort to put out into the world, bring value, build relationships. And so a lot of times there's this big tug of war between what should be free and what should be paid content. And then also figuring out how do you actually profit from, you know, creating blogs or podcasts or videos? How do you make tangible money from the energy and effort that you're putting out into your content? And that is exactly what today's episode is all about. So if you're interested in learning more about monetizing your content to grow your business, keep watching. All right guys, I'm super excited to be bringing you today's episode because it is a recap of yet another expert panel I was honored to be a part of here in Austin, hosted by my friend Moby from The Fire Show. And this time I was joined by an expert panel. They're amazing folks really talking about how to monetize your content, how to turn your content into a business if that's kind of what you wanna do. So whether you are a YouTuber or a blogger and you wanna just directly monetize your content or you're an online creator or an entrepreneur or a business owner and you're looking to leverage the content you're creating to grow your business, you're gonna love this episode. Now, I've highlighted some of my best tips and strategies that I shared during that live event, but if you wanna watch the entire episode, I will link to it below. It's going to be on my friend Moby's, his channel, and you can catch the entire episode. There's also an accompanying blog to this episode with even more strategies and resources, so at any time during the video, make sure to click the description box below and access all of those free tips and resources. Without further ado, let's get into the episode and talk about how to generate you know, revenue from your content. I, I got yours. Okay, perfect. So we'll just introduce, we'll have the uh, panelists introduce themselves and I will not be the one talking so much. Cool. All right. Hey everyone. So my name is Kim Jimenez. First of all, thank you so much for coming out here. I know y'all can't see yourselves, but I can see your smiling faces and I can feel the energy. So just, it's awesome to be amongst online entrepreneurs, which is not as common in yeah. the real world. Um, so thanks for, for coming out. And Moby, thank you for hosting these awesome cool. events. So my name is Kim Jimenez, like I mentioned, and I got my start in the online space, actually helping my husband launch and grow his first multi-million dollar company. And so kind of started interning, doing a lot of, of, you know, social media marketing for small businesses, then went into corporate, you know, handled multi-million dollar marketing campaigns um, at a larger scale, you know, virtually. And that kind of evolved into just launching my own company as a consultant. And now I am very happy that we, uh, our most recent project is called the Business Lounge. And so we run a membership site teaching online entrepreneurs how to grow and scale online companies. So that's been a lot of fun. We're privileged enough to have you know 12,000 members and, and serve them every single month in 32 countries, different languages. And so I'm super excited to share kind of like our journey of how we did that. But more importantly, what we see working for our members every single day. So we're kind of in the trenches with our members, helping them build their own online companies in totally different spaces, from fitness coaches to bloggers, YouTubers, online entrepreneurs, videographers, people in very different niches that you probably never heard about, like pole dancing gear. So things like that, and we were able to see kind of behind the scenes of how their journeys um, are kind of unfolding. So it's really exciting to share that with you guys. Yes. So you built your community, which I'm a part of. Fantastic. It actually taught me how to use Canva. I had no idea how to, I had no idea how to use it before. When you built that community, and it kind of goes into what I asked him, um, why did you build it? And did you feel that you weren't an expert and you felt slightly like an imposter when you built it? Yeah, I still do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... That's a great, no, no, Chris never feels like an imposter. I, I definitely do. Um, no, so why I built the community. Okay, so initially I started doing social media marketing for Chris's company. Kind of our friends started asking like, how are you guys doing this? How are you getting so much success? And I started a blog because I thought 
that's what I should be doing. This was 2012. Um, and like a lot of you guys, I was hustling to grow my email list. Didn't know what I was going to do with it because it was just kind of you know a side thing. And so that eventually led into a full-time job, clients asking for our services, transitioned into consulting. And finally, you know, our customers were basically telling us, like, how can we get more access? Like, yes, you're managing all these huge campaigns, um, and we love that, but can you train our teams? Like, how can you develop this as an internal strategy for our, our full staff to you know, take hold of? So I started doing a lot of that, and then um, our email subscribers started asking just organically, like, hey, when is your first course gonna come out? Like, we want access to that. I can't afford to hire you, but I would love to learn how you do what you do for your clients. So it was just an organic process through a lot of years. I think I, I was doing it for four years before I even launched my first online course. And so launched the first online course, flopped epically, like three people bought it. It was <laughs> terrible, spent months just killing myself trying to figure out you know, what people wanted and had to be perfect and didn't take the time to validate the idea. So after that process, I just spent the next six months like really digging into what people wanted. I started a Facebook group, um, charged, you know, for an introductory class, it was like $9. Uh, people got into the Facebook group and I started hustling my buns off, just like going live as much as I possibly could, asking questions, really digging into what were the obstacles that my audience was having, because I felt this disconnect to where I had been pushing out content for years on my blog, getting great feedback, and I thought I knew what they actually wanted, and I knew what they needed, but not what they wanted. And those are very, very different things. And so um, it wasn't, that the first course I created was not what they actually you know, needed. It was that I didn't know how to package and position it in a way that was attractive to them. So kind of <laughs> going through that process. Um, it's my mom. I'm not <laughs> kidding. It is my mom. Hi, Please mom. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so you know, kind of gave it another run. People started asking, hey, can you teach us how to do blogging? Can you teach us how to do graphics? Can you teach us branding? And so through my experience with working with clients, they had basically brought me into their entire business model, right? So when you do marketing for clients, if you guys, and any of you guys in, in marketing, social media, any kind of space like that, okay. So when you're working with clients, you know that your social media campaigns or your marketing, online marketing campaigns can only be as successful as their entire end offer, right? Like you have to build their own funnels. You have to have amazing branding. It's not just let me market this product. It's let me get into your business and figure out like exactly how to sell it and what we need to do to change, right? That business model, change that offer, change the messaging, change the copywriting. So it's all encompassing. You end up learning learning how to run a business in multiple different niches. So it just happened organically where people, after we launched that first course, it was not you know, kind of what people expected. Launched the second iteration, that worked a lot better, but still I didn't feel like I wanted to have a business where I was launching constantly to try to get new customers. And slowly through just asking people what you know, they actually wanted from us, decided, hey, let's just try a membership. Let's just see how it goes. Had no expectations for it, thought, it might be a complete you know, flop. Just put it out there and um, we got our first 80 members literally the second day that we opened the cart. So that was a really good indication for what people actually wanted and I felt more prepared. But then instead of just coming out with all these courses and all this content, we built it with our community. So I said, guys, Literally, I'm going to let you choose exactly what you want in the membership, and we're gonna build this thing together. So every week, I was asking questions, I was throwing surveys, polls, I was going live, asking for exactly what their challenges were. Until this day, every time we launch new content, every single piece that we release into the membership is 100% dictated by our members. And even though they don't always know exactly what they need, we kind of get a feel for what they want, and that's what's helped us grow. Let's say you are starting to make that content. You're posting on Instagram stories. You're making LinkedIn. Uh, you're reaching out to people. How do you actually figure out what they want? Because uh, it's I can say, hey, would you pay five bucks for X, Y, Z? Most people don't want to hurt my feelings. They're like, sure, sure, leave me alone now. But uh, how do you actually validate that? What are people's problems that they're worth, they're going to pay for? Like for financial advisors, right? How does someone figure it out? I think that's a great question. Um, so there's no validation like money in the bank, right? 
Like, you can test and ask people all day long, but at the end of the day, if they're not willing to pay for it, they're not actually going to, you know, tell you the truth. So at the end of the day, you really have to think about, okay, how can I validate this offer with real dollars? So I'm a huge proponent of doing pre-sales. I think that's an amazing way of gauging whether or not your audience is ready for a specific offer and getting paid up front. Maybe you offer a massive discount for your pre-sales. I did that with the business lounge and it worked really well. I did it with my second course and it worked really well. And so it's about testing an offer, right? You have to, and I, I totally agree with Amanda. I think that there's a balance here between making an educated guess and then actually testing it with a real audience. There is no perfect balance. You have to figure that on your own and no online guru is gonna tell you, this is exactly what you need to do because everyone's journeys are totally different. Like you are in charge of that, like take ownership of it. At the end of the day, it's your responsibility as the entrepreneur to figure out what people actually want. And we can whine and complain and say like, oh, you know, I'm not sure. Or, you know, people are confusing. If everyone did this, no one would actually get any products into the real market. Like, at the end of the day, just put something out there and see what people say. They're going to hate it or they're going to love it and both are amazing. If they love it, great, you have a solid product. If they hate it, even better because then you don't have to waste your time and your energy like I did with my first product, slaving away for four months trying to figure out like, how do I teach people how to do this and then have zero customers. So pre-sales, I think that's an amazing way. Another thing you can do is collaborate with other people. Dude, just have common sense. Look at your market. Look, it's this simple, seriously. Go look at what other people are doing. Is there a market for that offer? Do you have competitors? That's a great sign that people want to actually buy what you are selling. And then just literally take a spreadsheet, figure out what are my competitors, what are they selling, what is the price point? Business 101, it works every time. And the problem that we face a lot is that we're seeing this new trend of everybody's an expert, right? And everyone's like an Instagrammer and a YouTuber and a blogger, and that's fantastic. I'm so for it. But at the end of the day, if you don't do the business work, the hard stuff, you're never gonna know what your audience actually wants. You're just gonna keep throwing content out there and then seeing, okay, well, we get a lot of engagement on this type of post, or we get a lot, and those are good indicators, but at the end of the day, you're not gonna know until someone actually opens their wallet and gives you their money. So that's my answer. Do you wanna add something? Yeah, well, we're good, yeah. <laughs> I'm making content on Instagram, on YouTube, and I picked a platform, and I'm doing one platform that's search. Uh, but I'm trying everything a little bit, and I heard someone tell me, you need to have a website, and you can't sell shit on social media, you gotta have an email list. And I'm, I'm coming to believe it. And let's say I have 10K followers on Instagram around a niche, uh, health and fitness for dudes. Um, I have an idea of the customer. I have some content going. I started the website. I have like 100 people on my, on my email list. I'm like, I need to sell something. My rent's coming up. What's the process that I start going into? This is a big question, but I know you can do it, so. <laughs> you mean the process in terms of like product development or actually building a funnel, like how? The funnel. The funnel. So from okay. social media to, e to website to email. Okay. Yeah. So if you're in that stage where maybe you haven't sold anything yet or haven't done it consistently, I think you have to keep things as simple as possible. I think our first kind of um, inclination as marketers, because we're, by the way, we're all marketers. Like if you're an entrepreneur, you're a marketer. And so it's too complicated things. Like we have to have these amazing automations and then there's gotta be like an engagement sequence and a sales sequence and a follow-up sequence. And that can be really sexy and really fun to play with after you've validated your product, after you have a customer base that's told you, hey, I love this aspect of the product, this needs tweaking, or you know, you need to go through a process of perfecting that offer. But I think initially, in terms of like, how do you build a funnel, I think the first thing you have to do is just send one email that says, hey, I have this for sale, here's an awesome you know, bonus, or here's an awesome incentive to purchase it now. Most people don't understand the power of scarcity. And I think that's really missing across the board for most people online. So 
I think we have to understand that as marketers, as online entrepreneurs, we're competing against giant e-commerce brands, right? We have the power of Amazon, where literally with one click, you can get anything ordered online. There's so many options online. People don't have a lot of attention span. So A, you have to make the offer irresistible. And the way that you make the offer irresistible is you make it super specific. And when I'm talking about super specific, I mean you position it for a very individualized person. In an audience where, like for example, we have a global audience, right? We have customers from every different country you can practically think of, speak different languages, are in very different niches. And so whenever we put out an offer that's specific for a blogger or you know one kind of client, because we have that, you know, in your audience you're not always gonna have people who are in the same stage. If you're a consultant, you're gonna have, you know, maybe you're a B2B, you're working with businesses who are startups, or you're working with corporations, or you're working with, I don't know, Fortune 500 companies. They're a totally different customer. So if you can make an offer hyper specific for one individual problem, not 17. You're not solving 17 problems. You're solving one problem. And then add an extra layer of scarcity and say, hey, this offer ends in three days. Or, hey, here's a 20% discount. It ends, you know, next week. Or, hey, here's a limited time bonus. You can really incentivize your customers to purchase something now, like we see the same model, you know, in regular retail stores all the time, right? There's constantly a sale going on. And the reason for that is because people have too many options. They might want your product. They might feel like you're the right person, but they're not buying because there's no reason to. They could buy it two weeks from now. Does that make sense? So online, we don't always make that distinction and we're like wondering why people are coming to our websites seeing or reading through an entire sales page, going to our checkout page, filling out their name and email, and then leaving halfway, right? That happens all the time. About 90% of the people who make it all the way up to your checkout page are leaving. And so if you can find a way to really level up your offer and position it in a way that screams to them, this is what I need and I need it now, it'll help you get some momentum. Now you have to be really careful with scarcity. It has to be authentic scarcity, yes. right? It has to be real. You can't just like put a countdown timer in and then it'll reset after the three days and the offer is just evergreen. You have to be careful with how many times you promote the same thing 90 days is usually the key. You don't promote the same thing to your entire audience for 90 days because then it just gets boring and repetitive. So make it, you know, a, a, I tell my, my audience all the time, my members, you need to have a promotion calendar. We all usually have content calendars, but we have zero promotional calendars. And so not talking about the stuff that you actually sell at the end of the day doesn't make you money, right? And so there's a very um, interesting balance that you have to, figure out through experimentation of how many, you know, how many content pieces do you put out and how many times you actually sell something. So I usually tell my members, and this usually gets like a lot of resistance, but I say, hey, have something that you're selling every single month, throw out an offer. Maybe it's not to your entire list. Maybe it's a segment of your email list. Maybe it's just to your YouTube subscribers. Maybe it's exclusive for your Facebook group, but have something out there that you can start testing and experimenting with. So I think that's just a step. The first step is just Get something out there, do it consistently, test, experiment, and make sure that it's a lot of scarcity, and of course it is super specific. Awesome, sweet. Um, if I have nothing right now, Chris, and I wanna make a paid community, let's say I am an expert, but I'm not making any content right now, I don't have a list, but I know my shit really, really well about how to make videos, right? What's, what do I do? So if this is the case, and I see this all the time as well, leverage other people's audiences. That's simple, right? So if you, and this depends on, you know, who you are selling to, right? So if you're selling services, and you're selling services like the VRA business, for example, it's a very hyper-specific niche, you have to figure out where those people are hanging out. They might not be on Facebook, they may be on LinkedIn, maybe they're on very hyper-specific forums, maybe online doesn't make sense and you need to create that market, you know? You have to figure that out. If you're selling services, it's gonna be different than if you're selling physical products. But if you're selling physical products, for example, one of the easiest ways to start making money, and 
I'm telling you, there's brands out there that don't put out content at all. Yeah. They leverage other people's you know, audiences, and that's where influencer marketing comes in, right? So you can start reaching out, make a list of 30, 40, 50 bloggers, YouTubers, podcasters, people whose job is to build a community for you, send them products. You know, I do this all the time with our, my members, especially when you're in the physical product space, this is awesome. You can send them products, ask them for you know, uh, an awesome review if they love it, and just hustle your buns off doing that. That's a really great strategy. But then if you're selling services, you could do the same thing. Establish your authority through relationships. Yeah. So get featured on podcasts, start guest blogging. There's tons of companies that need content. We take on a new guest blog every other week because it helps keep our blog fresh. So if you start leveraging other people's audiences and their eyeballs, that'll be a lot easier for you to start getting momentum. No list, no social media following, no money, no paid advertising. The internet is free, y'all. You what? gotta use it. Kind of jumping on what Chris said, I love that he mentioned that because it is a process and it is it does take time. But I read this quote one time and I have no idea who said it, but it was... Uh, it was me. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's clarity doesn't strike, it unfolds. And a lot of the questions that you guys have today are about clarity. Yes. What should I do next? Yes. How do I know what's the right offer? How do I reach my ideal client? What kind of content do I need to create? And at the end of the day, we can give you ideas and we can give you strategies strategies and we can show you what has worked for us, but you're going to figure that out through doing, right? Like clarity will come to you as you do the work. And so a lot of the times, you know, we get so flustered and so frustrated and so like in our heads about what is it that we need to be doing with our content? Like what, you know, what is the one answer? Do it, just engage. It really helps a lot. And sure, thought is important and you have to have strategy behind it, but at the end of the day, if you don't take the first steps and actually like dive into the trenches with your customers or your potential customers, if you have no idea who those people are, you're really not gonna know. So take time and be patient which is a novel concept these yeah. days, um, the process will reveal itself as you do the work. All right guys, so there you have it. That's you know my best tips and strategies to generate revenue, to monetize your content and do it in a smart and strategic way. Not by working harder, but actually by working smarter and leveraging what you already have to grow. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, this is the question of the day. What is your number one tip insight or strategy to monetize your content and actually generate some revenue from it. What have you seen work and not work? Let me know in the comment section below. I answer every single comment as much as possible and I'd love to hear from you. Also, don't forget to please subscribe to the channel if you want to support it and you never want to miss another episode. Don't forget to also hit the notification bell because these days it's a two-step process. If you subscribe, you're not going to be notified, but if you're notified, you'll know every single time we upload. So make sure to do those two things. And of course, like this video and share it with a friend who needs to know how to monetize his or her content to grow her online business. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you on the next one. Bye for now.